Good morning, Bethany Church. We're so glad you've uh, gotten up on a cold winter morning and trekked your way here today. And uh, we start a whole new month. This is February. It is also Black History Month. And in keeping with that, we're going to have a Black History theme this month, okay? And uh, so we're going to have uh, some singing in a moment that will reflect some of that. And it's just going to be a, a great day here in the house of the Lord. Hey, um, Roger Zeller uh, obviously had open heart surgery this past week, and I've been by to see him, and he's called me on the, the times I couldn't. He called me yesterday, and uh, he, he had a little setback that he was having some shortness of breath, but he is, uh, they've treated him some more, and he doesn't have that any longer, but uh, he's still in the hospital, still needs our prayers. And Sue Pepper had taken a pretty severe fall last week, and... Uh, She's got stitches in her face from the fall and that kind of thing. So we need to be praying for their recovery, all right? And so as we kick off on our welcome today, we're going to look to the Lord and we're also going to pray for these people. Father in heaven, we are so glad to be in the house of the Lord. And we are so glad that those who are not able to be here can log in and do so online. And we pray, Father, your blessing on both those who are here and those who are online. And we pray, Father, for healing blessings, both for Roger and for Sue. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would extend your power from heaven, give them a healing touch of the great physician, and bring about a full recovery for both. Lord, we've entered into the house of the Lord from a different kinds of week. Uh, some of us are excited about things that are happening, and some are down. Uh, some are, uh, have great requests on their heart, and others, it's like, oh Lord, I just want, I'm here to praise you. But Lord, we pray that no matter how a person has come in, they'll be able to set that all aside and just worship you, focus on you, and give you, Lord, uh, their worship, a tribute to you, your worth, your praise, the honor and adoration that you're due. And then, Lord, we ask that you would speak to us through your word today. Some part of it would just have our name written on it, and we'll go from this place saying, it truly was good to be in the house of the Lord. So bless us in this hour, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Glory for you are 
Give us us today today our daily daily bread, bread, and forgive us our debts, as as we we forgive forgive our debtors. debtors. And lead lead us not into into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Feel free to sing along on the choruses if you guys know this one. Um, Has anybody seen... um, has anybody seen uh, Pursuit, uh, ha- Pursuit of Happiness? Is that right? right? Is that the mm-hmm. name of the movie? Okay. You, do you remember? Where, I'm not seeing anything in the back, by the way, guys. I don't know if you know that. Um, I don't know if you remember when they get rejected from the um, homeless shelter because they didn't have any more room. There was no room in the inn. <laughs> and he was like on his last, you know, hope of anything. Um, he, he was about to find out, I think, the next day that he got the job as the stockbroker. You know, but they, he, it's him and his son, his five-year-old son, they were homeless completely, had no place to stay. And they went into this church, and uh, they were just like weeping and just, you know, stopping back and forth and just taking it in. And it was this song. So I was really inspired by it, and I thought we'd, we'd do it today for you. So right, here we go. The way may not seem easy You did not say it would be But when our tribulations get so light We tend to stray from the
Woo! Good job. <laughs> Amen. Wow, you may be seated. That's a great start to our service. You may be seated. Hey, we have a, a new month and we have a new memory verse. And the memory verse is on the screen. It's from the book of Zephaniah. We're going to be going through the book of Zephaniah this month. And uh, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17, this is such a powerful verse. I, I think we, we all need to, to memorize it. Not just should, we need to. Uh, listen to Zephaniah 3, 17. The Lord your God is with you. Man, if you stop right there. Isn't that great? I mean, you, you have times in your life and you feel like you're all alone. Am I not right? And this verse says, no, the Lord your God is with you. Now, then the next, next part is powerful. He is mighty to save. Amen? Amen. So sometimes I'm feeling alone, having a little self-pity party, and, and like, boy, what in the world is a... A weaselly little squirrely guy like me. I'm weaving a few things in there, squirrely. All right. Some of you were here before. What's a, what's a little guy like me? What am I going to do about this? But the Lord your God is with you. He's mighty to save. Is that awesome? That's awesome. Now watch next. He will take great delight in you. Oh, Sometimes we feel like we've blown it so badly that even God cannot look on us, right? Whoa. But you know what he does? He filters it through his own son, Jesus Christ, and he says, he will take great delight in you. This is a powerful verse. The next part is, because we get so agitated and anxious and worry and fret. Anybody out there like that? You ever been worried, fret, agitated, a little concerned? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Listen to this. He will quiet you with his love. Is this a powerful verse? Every part of it. Here's the part I love the best. Do we have any singers out there? Anybody? Raise your hand. I want to see it. If, you've, if you sing at all, I mean, if you sing in the car to the radio when the windows are up and nobody's around, okay, I see more hands going up. <laughs> you're, you're singers. Listen to this part. He will rejoice over you with singing. Now, you sing to him, but this verse says, God sings about you. Wow. Is it? I love this verse. This verse is what I feel the key verse of the book. And that's why I want you to memorize it so that when you think Zephaniah, you think Zephaniah 317. And we're going to say it together, okay? We start with the address, which is Zephaniah 317. Say it with me. Zephaniah 317, the Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with his singing. Listen, this is great. <laughs> this is great. I take it the first line is the premise. The Lord your God is with you. And then the next four lines are evidences of it. Isn't that great? That's to help you memorize this. You want to memorize this verse and have this in your arsenal verses when you're going about daily life and life isn't going exactly the way you like it. <laughs>
Amen. You may be seated. We're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper at this time. And uh, as we do so, we're reminded of what the Lord taught us. I'm going to read from the scripture and then to summarize. He says, uh, For I received of the Lord that which I passed on to you, the Lord on the same night in which he was betrayed. And when he had uh, given thanks, he broke it and said, took the bread and he broke it and he said, This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way afterward, he took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. Two object lessons. The bread as a physical body of Jesus Christ, who uh, was broken for us. He died on the cross for us. Um, And the word for is very powerful. It means in your place. So when we partake of the bread, we are to remember that Jesus took my place on the cross. I died with him. I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live in the flesh by the uh, faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. So I remember that Jesus was my substitute. He took my place. The second element is called the cup. The cup is the new covenant. There was an old covenant And the Old Covenant was a law, and the law could only kill you. It could not save you. If you messed up, it told you you messed up, now you're guilty, you know you're guilty, you need to plead guilty, because God's going to find you guilty, and you're going to die. And the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus our Lord, when he shed his blood, Jesus Christ paid in full the price of our sins. For without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Wow, what, what powerful object lessons here. When I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, His body took my place, His blood washed away my sin, and now as I come to this table, I, I, it's not like I can lose my salvation, that's eternal, it's eternal life. But my fellowship can be lost. I can get out of step with the Lord. And what do I do to get back in step? I remember what He did for me. I remember that He died in my place, and I say, oh God, thank you for dying in my place. I'm so sorry, I've sinned, I confess my sin. Because if I confess my sin, he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. This is kind of like a tune-up in your Christian life where where you reflect. Because the passage goes on, for whenever you eat this bread and you drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup in the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body of the Lord. So a man ought to examine himself before he eats the bread and drinks the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. The word judgment there is discipline. God's discipline on himself. Why? Because just as we saw from Zephaniah, judgment's coming on the whole world. He's going to sweep it all away in judgment. But if we know Jesus, we're not condemned. It's like the Passover. He passes right over us. We have eternal life. But he wants us to examine ourselves so we can confess it so that we confess it. I'm going to ask God's blessing upon these elements, then you're going to have the opportunity to slide out of the rows. Those of you who've been here before, you know exactly how we do this. You're going to get a cup. There's actually one stacked on top of the other. The upper one has the juice in it. The lower one has the bread in it. You'll return to your seat, and then we will all partake of these elements together. While you're there, and and you got the bread, and you got the cup, just for a moment, put the bread in your hand and look at it, or leave it in the cup and say, He took my place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Take the cup and just set it in the middle of your hand. It kind of looks like the nail pierced hole through your hand, the blood. Say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for shedding your blood to forgive me of my sins. All right? It says examine our hearts. So we got to examine and say, and then in your silent prayer, you just name them. Lord, here's how I failed you. Clean me up. Get me back on track, oh God. All right? So we're going to pray upon these, these elements. Father in heaven, These are just symbolic objects to remind us that Jesus Christ died for us on the cross and shed his blood that we might have eternal life. They're memorial items to remind us. You want us to remember the great price that was paid so that we might have life and forgiveness of sins. 
We remember that, Lord, and we worship you for it. Bless these elements as we partake of them. In Jesus' name, amen. Come, partake of Lord Elmer. to the bread the Lord Jesus said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me with regard to the cup our Savior said this, is, this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this in remembrance of me. In the word it says that after he celebrated the Lord's Supper, they then sang a hymn and went out. We're going to sing a hymn or a praise song at this time. Please stand as we sing.
my final thought is this. Zephaniah 317. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. I'm going to just stop right there. We'll pick up with that verse. You've got to memorize this. You've got to memorize. It's just great. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. We do have an announcement. Uh, you may be seated for a moment. I've got a one-minute video clip that relates to the announcement that I want you to see. It's about the ladies' Bible study. Uh, so women, you're invited to participate this coming Wednesday at noon or at 7 o'clock. All right, so we want you to uh, be sure and take in this great Bible study opportunity. If there was ever a time where the sons and daughters of God needed to rise up in the spirit of Elijah, that time is right now. More and more people are forgetting who our God is that he is who he has always declared himself to be and he can still do exactly what he said he can do. God's hand is on you, not just the missionary, not just the pastor, not just the Sunday school leader. God's hand is on you right where he has placed you to be used for his purposes and his glory. Because we operate by the power and the presence and the discernment of the Spirit of God, we should still be able to live in alignment with the promises that our God has declared to us. I don't know, that looked pretty good. I know you guys are going to want to sneak in. But no, <clears throat> you've got to come to Monday night's men's, uh, our, our Bible study. Our Bible study starts tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock, okay? Notice that in the bulletin. It's not at, before we're meeting at 7.30 because we're taking in part of the game. No game. Super Bowl's not till next Sunday. You have nothing better to do tomorrow. Come, we're going to do a study called AHA. It's about those AHA moments in your life. And uh, I think you're going to really enjoy that. Men, join us tomorrow at 6 p.m., We'll have something to eat, most likely pizza. Come join us. And then um, uh, Family Matters, small group Bible study is tonight at six, no, 5 o'clock. It's at 5 o'clock, and it's at the Erickson's home. If you don't know where their home is, just ask me or ask the Erickson's, and we'll make sure you get there. Text me. I'll text you the address and that kind of stuff. So those are the announcements I have. You read over the bulletin for the other ones. Uh, their special mission emphasis in there, a book reading club. There's, there's stuff in there you want to read. And those who are at home, I want to remind you that you can find that all online. The bulletin's there. And also you can do your tithing online, easy tithe, or you can drop it by the church or mail it in. And I just want to thank you who, are, who have been doing that. And all of you have been giving a, a portion unto the Lord because you love him. Uh, the Lord, Lord has been blessing in the difficult season that we've been through with COVID and, and the pandemic. God has been faithful to move you in your heart to give charitably unto the Lord, and we're thankful for that. We're going to ask God's blessing now, and then we will be dismissed. Father in heaven, bless our offering as we give it. Uh, Lord, whatever means we're using, just bless it, Lord, to advance your cause, the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Both here and abroad, Lord, we're very thankful for the Baptist International Church that was started in Hungary, and, and you're blessing it with growth. And Lord, our missionary outreach... You, internationally has been blessed by you. And Lord, you're working here in our midst. Continue to bless, oh Lord, I pray. Use these gifts we give to you. And Lord, as we go out, we're going to memorize and we're going to live out the fact the Lord our God is with us and he is mighty to save. Thank you for that, oh Lord. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful Lord's Day.